हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand linear time invariant system in Z domain. In the previous lecture, we understood about LTI systems. Now let us understand these LTI systems in Z domain, which is nothing but frequency domain. We know that the output of an LTI system can be given as y of n is equal to h of n convoluted with x of n. In frequency domain, we can write this as y of z is equal to h of z into x of z. So this is the time domain representation of LTI system, where convolution in time domain is multiplication in frequency domain. So this is the frequency domain representation or z domain representation, where y of z is the z transform of y of n, h of z is the z transform of h of n. And x of z is z transform of x of n. And here h of z is also known as the system function. So from this equation, we can find the system function. So we can write h of z is equal to y of z divided by x of z. So from this we understood that if y of n and x of n is given, we can take the z transform of this function. And we can find the system function h of z. So here we have obtained the equation for y of z, and from this equation we can find h of z. Once y of z is known, if we take inverse z transform, we can find y of n. Now let us understand linear constant coefficient difference equation. Now the system function h of z can be directly obtained. Or we can find h of z directly by using the differential equation, which is given here. So this equation we have understood in our previous lecture. So in this equation, if we take this term towards left hand side, we can write y of n plus summation of k is equal to one to n a k y of n minus k that will be equal to summation of k is equal to zero to m. b k x of n minus k now if we apply z transform for y of n we can write y of z plus summation of k is equal to 1 to n a k for the term y of n minus k we can apply time shift property we can write it as z to the power of minus k y of z so it will be equal to Summation of k is equal to zero to m b k. So again here, if we apply time shift property, we can write z to the power of minus k x of z. In the left hand side, if we take y of z as common, we can write y of z into one plus summation of k is equal to one to n a k z to the power of minus k. And if we rearrange the right hand side equation, we can write x of z. Summation of k is equal to zero to m b k z to the power of minus k. So from this equation, if we take the ratio y of z divided by x of z, we can write it as summation of k is equal to zero to m b k z to the power of minus k divided by one plus summation of k is equal to one to n a k z to the power of minus k. So y of z divided by x of z is h of z. So we have obtained the system function h of z by taking the differential equation. In this equation, the roots of the denominator, which is a k, are known as poles, and the roots of the numerator b k are known as zeros. There are some special cases where a system can be all zero system. If we say all zero systems, which means the system is having only zeros and poles are equal to Zero. So, if we make poles as zero, which means a k is equal to zero, so we will be left out with only the numerator divided by one. So, we'll get h of z is equal to summation of k is equal to zero to m b k z to the power of minus k. Since here k value is varying from zero to m, so this system will be having m number of zeros. 
So this system function is helpful in finite impulse response, which is FIR. The second type of system is all pole system where BK is equal to zero, which means the system is having only poles and the zeros are equal to zero. So if we make BK is equal to zero, then we'll obtain H of Z is equal to B naught divided by one plus summation of K is equal to one to N AK Z to the power of minus K. This is the system function for all pole system. So here, the k value is varying from 1 to n. So the system consists of n number of poles. This system function is helpful in infinite impulse response, which is IIR. Next type of system is pole zero system, where the system function consists of both poles and zeros, which is represented by the first equation. Let us take an example to understand this. Let us take a system which is described by y of n is equal to 1 by 2 y of n minus 1 plus 2 x of n. For this system, if we take z transform, we can write y of z that will be equal to 1 by 2 z inverse y of z by using the time shift property plus 2 x of z in place of 2 x of n. If we shift this term towards left hand side, we can write y of z minus 1 by 2 z inverse y of z that will be equal to 2 x of z. If we take y of z common in these two terms, we can write y of z into 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse that will be equal to 2 x of z. Now, if we rearrange this equation by taking the ratio y of z divided by x of z, we can write it as 2 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse. So, we will get h of z that will be equal to 2 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse. So, from this, there is no z term in the numerator. So, the number of zeros will be equal to 0. And in the denominator, we are having 1 by 2 z inverse. So, we are having one pole at z is equal to 1 by 2. So, this system has one pole that will be equal to 1 by 2 and it is having 0 at z is equal to 0, which means we are not having any zeros here. So, for this equation, if we take inverse z transform, we can write it as h of n is equal to 2 into 1 by 2 whole to the power of n u of n, where u of n is the unit step function. So, this equation is obtained after taking the inverse z transform of this equation. This is about linear time invariant system in z domain. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.